Okay, so in this tutorial I just wanted to cover a couple of things. The first is how to open and close libraries. Now, libraries, um, if you keep them small, um, they're a lot easier to manage, to back up. And so what I tend to do is try and keep libraries for different projects that I'm working on. It means it's much easier to move them from one hard drive to another and also to clean out any render files. And that's the second thing we're going to look at here, which is how to delete render files within Final Cut, but then also on your hard drive as well by looking into the, the Final Cut Pro library itself. So the first thing is um, that when we have libraries open in Final Cut, we can open and close them. So if we go to File and Open Library, you can see I've got several libraries I have available to me here that I can open up. Um, and then I also have the option to open up other libraries. So if I've plugged in an external hard drive and Final Cut doesn't have that library um, recognized, then I can go to open a library and search for it and bring it up. So we'll just open up one other library here. And you can see that when the library opens, it's actually opening up all the edits that are in there as well. And if you have a bigger library, then that can take a, a reasonable amount of time. So the library we've opened here, we can see has a number of different edits in it. Um, for this flipbook tutorial that I'm creating. Okay, if I right click on that library, I can do a few things. Okay, what I want to look at here is that we can reveal it in the finder, which we'll look at in a second for deleting render files um, from directly from the library. We can also close this library as well. Okay, so I'm going to close this library up, the Photoshop flipbook library, and you can see now that I have nothing selected because I don't have any libraries selected in my libraries folder across here on the left. So once I highlight my Final Cut Pro Tutorials library again, you can see it pops up once more. Okay, so we can also delete render files from our libraries as well, okay? And you can do this in one of two ways. One is to delete them within Final Cut. So here, with the library selected, we can go to File, and we're looking for this Delete Generated Library Files, okay? And this is where we can delete any render files that we have, any optimized media, and any proxy media. Now, this is a great way of clearing up space in your hard drive, because the render files, the optimized media, and the, the proxy media will take up a lot of space. So if you're finishing up a project, you're not sure that you're going to come back to it and edit it for a while, then these are definitely the first files to come to to delete. Okay, And the first ones I normally um, delete are the render files themselves, because you can always re-render. So you're not losing anything by deleting render files. You can always uh, re-render your, your files. Optimized media and proxy media can take a long time to generate, so I tend to, to do those second if I have to, or when I'm kind of archiving a project, I'll delete those before I archive it on an external drive. Okay, We're not going to delete anything here, although we could. Um, we're going to actually show how we can delete those from within the, the Final Cut Pro library itself. Okay, So if we right click on here and go to Reveal in Finder, then our Final Cut Pro library will be highlighted in the Finder. So now what we're going to do is actually have a look in the library. Now it looks like a file when you're when you first see this, but actually this is a, a package, so we can actually look into this. And basically it's wrapped up so that you don't delete files by accident. But if we right click and go to show package contents, okay, then you can see I have a folder for each of my events. Okay, and then I also have a folder for proxy footage. And then if I go into the edits themselves, so this beatbox edits for instance, then you can see I have render files for that particular file or project. Okay, so let's pick a project that I've been working on recently, and you can see here under this folder we have the original media, the render files, and then shared items as well. Okay, so if we click on render files, you can see we've got Peaks Data, Thumbnail Media, but we might also have a lot of other video render files in there as well. Okay, so let's just jump into another folder here. So if we have a look at the proxy footage folder, you can see in the render files folder, then we have um, this high quality media folder here as well. And these are the files that can take up a lot of space when you're working within Final Cut Pro, okay? And basically it's a folder that Final Cut creates that contains frames that you've rendered out, okay? So essentially, we don't need render files. We can just drag them to the trash or we can hold down Command and hit Backspace and we can delete those render files, okay? We don't want to delete original media, okay? Um, but we can delete transcoded media, okay? So this is proxy media that's been generated for this project, okay? So basically a half resolution version of the original file in the Apple ProRes 422 proxy format. Um, and we can delete that as well. All that we would need to do the next time is actually re-render out that proxy footage if we wanted to edit in the proxy mode in Final Cut Pro, okay? So essentially doing this, isn't going to cause any problems 
when you actually come back into Final Cut Pro. We can delete those files, those render files, those proxy files, um, and your project will still work. You may have to go through the process of re-rendering or retranscoding um, some of those files that you created, but essentially your project's still intact. Okay. So as I said, this is a great way of saving some space on your hard drive, um, and particularly with render files, if I'm in a hurry to get a project going, I'm running out of disk space, then render files will be the first thing that I go to in older projects that I'm not working on to actually delete those, and it can really help to, to save disk space and stop that spinning ball which is uh, often the problem. Once your hard drive gets to only five or 10 gigabytes free on it, you're really gonna struggle to work in Final Cut Pro. And I just wanted to show you how much space we do save when we delete those files from the trash. So we just filled up um, the trash with uh, render files and transcoded media, okay? And these amount to about one and a half gigabytes of space. So if we have a look at our hard drive here, we've got 44.26 gigabytes free. And bearing in mind this is a short edit, only like three, four, five minutes, I think, for this tutorial that I created that we're deleting these uh, files from. So once we hit empty, you can see that we grab back the space. And actually, we will need to jump out of Final Cut Pro to delete all those files. So I'm just going to quit out of Final Cut Pro here. Okay. And then once I've quit out of Final Cut Pro, I'll just go back to the, the trash and empty out these render files. So this is one nice thing as well about deleting render files in this way is that you don't need, and you can see there we grab back a few more gigabytes, you don't need to have Final Cut Pro open in order to manage that disk space, which is quite nice, it makes it a bit quicker. Next time you open Final Cut Pro, there won't be any issues with files or projects if you're deleting render files, proxy files, Final Cut Pro will recognize you deleted them and just want to recreate them. And uh, also, if you're thinking about managing media, you might want to take a look at my tutorial that runs through how to back up a project in Final Cut Pro 10 as well. It's a really useful tutorial and it will definitely get you going in terms of backing up your projects, moving them onto an external hard drive and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.